Hello, good morning. Uh, I think we are ready now uh, to start our webinar on the open access to publications in Horizon 2020. Um, this webinar is part of the e-learning course that we are holding this week uh, within Foster Project. Uh, within Foster Project, we are uh, setting some courses uh, some of them are moderated, others are self-learning, and this week we have this course uh, specifically for uh, open access to publications in Horizon 2020. So you can uh, look at the Foster website and we'll be holding another courses and we'll uh, share them through the social networks and, and within the, the Foster Project uh, website. So, uh, for today, uh, we're going to talk a little bit on, on this uh, open access to publications in uh, Horizon 2020, and um, we'll, uh, see, we'll try to answer your questions in the end of the, of the webinar. So, we'll first do a summary of the requirements, and then uh, the practical implementation, and then uh, what open air can do to support uh, in terms of services and tools so um, so the open access is default for the research results in uh, horizon 2020 and uh, this means that all of the publications all of the research results uh, that are published need to be made open for everybody to see and to to be able to reuse uh, and why is this? Why, uh, why is this a requirement? Uh, because there's a lot of benefits in making the publications open access. It's good for science because it allows scientists to build on uh, the previous research results. It uh, avoids unnecessary duplication of efforts. Also, it's good for the economy because it speeds the innovation. It, in, it means that you get the information faster and you can uh, build upon it also faster. And it's good for society and to build the relationships and collaborations between scientists and uh, to the people, to the citizens of the, of the countries. And also to, to non-profit organizations. It builds on uh, transparency and also uh, the validation of the results of the of the science scientists uh, experiments so to do a summary of the requirements of uh, uh, open access in uh, within horizon 2020 um, so if you are uh, participating in a horizon 2020 funded project uh, what do you need to know in order to comply with the, the mandate well, uh, it's set in the multi-beneficiary general model grant agreement. So in clause 29.2 and 29.3, uh, it details exactly what you need to do uh, in terms of the dissemination and the giving open access to the publications. So uh, what it says, and this is the text of the grant agreement, is that uh, every, each and every beneficiary must ensure open access free of charge and with online access for any user to all peer-reviewed scientific publications relating to its results. And uh, we'll detail this a little bit more uh, in, 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 the other, uh, in the rest of the presentation. Uh, but uh, it means that all of the research results need to be made available for, for everybody and free of charge. And um, everybody is covered by this. So all of the beneficiaries of the funding uh, must provide this uh, free of charge and online access for users to the peer reviewed publication and doing that by depositing them into a repository. In other words, you can choose to do uh, the green open access, the green route, in which you, uh, the published article or final peer-reviewed manuscript is uploaded into an online repository uh, with or without an embargo period, or you can choose the open access publishing gold open access or gold route, in which the article is immediately open access uh, through a payment, usually. Uh, with associated costs. Uh, either way you choose, the green open access or the gold open access, you must always deposit uh, the publication in a repository. 
<clears throat> and how do you make your publication open access? Well, you can either uh, publish in any journal of your choice, either is a subscri subscription based or an open access journal, and then deposit in a repository and provide access. And you, you always need to deposit a version in the repository and add the metadata like the funder, the grant ID number, the acronym and the publication date and other information that are uh, necessary. And uh, which way to choose, you, you can try to see the pros and cons to, to any of them. So if you self-archive uh, your publications in a repository, uh, you can choose uh, any subscription-based journal and without a fee, so you don't need to make payments to, to, to self-archive because the repositories usually uh, are belonging to the, an institution or, or are, they are always free. Uh, the cons is that you may have an embargo period, so you need to, to see if this embargo period uh, is allowed uh, by the, the the funding the funder okay uh, as for the open access journals uh, you make a payment so this is a con you need to 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 pay to publish but uh, uh, you can uh, make it immediately available so it's a direct open access and uh, sometimes you can retain the copyright to the to the publication so where to deposit? Uh, you can deposit uh, your publication in an institutional repository or a disciplinary, uh, if you choose to, to do so. Uh, in some uh, disciplines, there are uh, very specific repositories like Archive and Europe of Med for Health. Or you can use Zenodo.org, which is EC co-funded, and it's a multidisciplinary and free repository. And uh, you can see uh, you can uh, look at the directories of open access repositories like uh, OpenOR and uh, WAR to see which repository is the most suitable for your case. Okay, And what to deposit? Uh, you can deposit the final peer-reviewed manuscript or the published version and add the met metadata, the funder, the grant ID, the acronym and the publication date. And this applies to all kinds of publications, but the emphasis is also always on the peer-reviewed journal articles. What uh, can you deposit? Well, you should check for your publisher's policies. Uh, you can uh, look at Sherpa Romeo. Uh, this is a database with policies for uh, uh, journals and, and publishers. <laughs> and also, uh, oh, sorry. <clears throat> and also, uh, you have an overview of the copyright policies and the uh, self-archiving permissions. But uh, in, in any case, you should also go to the publishers or the journal's website, because sometimes uh, there are some specificities, for example, uh, regarding the licenses you can use, and, um, and you should check both, uh, both sites. As for what you can deposit, uh, you can uh, usually in the repositories, people advise you to uh, put either the post print or the publisher's version. Uh, the post print is the version after the peer review. So uh, if you are publishing, you submit your article and then it goes through a peer review process. And this post print is the, the version after the peer review process, but without the, uh, the layout of the publisher, like the, the headlines and the, the pagination and this kind of details. So usually the repositories ask for the post print or the publisher's version if the publisher allows it. And this is what you can see in the, the Shepard Romeo uh, database. Uh, without, with or without uh, uh, the embargo. So the embargo is the period during which the access to the article is limited. Most of the publishers, even if they allow you to, to put the, the publisher's version, they ask for an embargo for the, 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 the PDF or, or the version that you are publishing. And when, wh when should you deposit? Uh, you should check the publisher's policies. And uh, you should deposit as soon as possible and that the latest on publication. This means that uh, if you choose uh, green, 
if the, the publisher asks for an embargo period, usually it's allowed six to seven months uh, to 12 months, uh, depending on the research area and the choice of journal. So uh, some areas uh, ask for, uh, late, uh, for larger, larger periods of time to embargo and others don't, don't need uh, such a big embargo. Uh, if you publish gold, uh, you can uh, you can give access immediately to the to the full version of the of the article. And uh, we now step into the practical implementation of the open access in H twenty twenty, and uh, I'm going to to give the floor to Pedro, which will. Uh, uh, talk a little bit more about this. Uh, I would just like to ask you if you have any questions to put them in the chat and we'll take notes and we'll answer all of your questions in the end of the presentations. And uh, Pedro, the floor is yours. Okay, um, let me start, start sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I think we we are now have all the um, the details about the the requirements, um, which I think are well explained. And now we will add some um, uh, added value information. Uh, let me check if the microphone. Okay. Uh, so we will add some um, added value information, some practical information about some parts um, of the, the um, some specific topics of the, the requirements. So we can say that um, so we can see this uh, this uh, uh, diagram representing like a summary of the of the the requirements, the practical implementation of the requirements. So you can go um, to publish in an open access journal or to publish in a subscription based journal. Uh, for a subscription based journal, you need to self archive in a, in a repository and you will have the immediate or delay open access uh, based on the, if it is, um, um, if, if you have embargo or restricted or open access and then you can also um, publish in an open access journal and have in, indeed uh, open access but you should always uh, deposit self-archive in a repository as Antonia said uh, but it's important to check always the publisher policies and this is the first um, practical information uh, that um, I want to, to provide in this webinar. So if you are not sure about the, if the publisher allows you to deposit in a repository to self-archive, uh, so you can use this um, service, the Sherpa Romeo, Romeo service, where you can uh, check for the, um, the publisher um, uh, copyright policies and self um, and the self-archive archiving policies. So first you you can check of course in the and you should check in the journal in the journal the website uh, but if you still have dobs or if you usually use this Sherpa Romeo service you can check the in Sherpa Romeo you can type your journal search for your journal and you will you will have in clear information about the kind of policy the way that um, in this uh, in this um, service Sherpa Romeo present the the policies are based in um, a colors taxonomy where you can see if it's green blue yellow or white and um, attach it to each color you have a, a kind of uh, a type of policy if it's green you can archive the preprint and the postprint or the publisher version if it's blue you can archive you you are aware that you can archive the postprint but um, in the in the <coughs> or the or the publisher version if it's yellow you you cannot archive the the postprint or the publisher version you can only archive the preprint and if it's white uh, archiving it's not formally supported by that specific uh, journal uh, you have also two specific um, services so similar services for spanish journals and for french journals that you can uh, check lucina and um, eloise um, but uh, in sherpa romeo you have 
um, so a full list of journals where you can check the policies. This is something that you should do because <coughs> so usually the research, the project coordinators have some doubts about the, the policies and you can always use this service, this useful uh, service. The other uh, question um, that usually researchers and project coordinators have uh, on the compliance um, of the, the EC requirements are related with um, costs and are related with um, APCs, the article processing charges. Uh, and uh, it, it's important to say that the, the costs associated to the article processing charges are um, covered by the the Horizon 2020 open access policy. So uh, researchers can publish in open open access journals or in, in subscription-based journals. Um, but uh, the um, so you should have costs for that, uh, but uh, you need to be aware that uh, uh, those costs are um, part of the budget of the project, the associated to dissemination and they are eligible for Re reimbursement. So we have um, uh, an important question here, an important um, note here is that um, uh, the, the costs are eligible, of course, only during the duration of the action, and which is, this is a, um, a relevant um, uh, a relevant remark because as you know as project coordinators or researchers involved in, in different research projects um, several outputs of the of the projects or articles or other kinds of um, research outputs um, from the project um, appear after uh, the end of the project so uh, and which is a problem for the the project because then you don't have the possibility to to have to cover those those costs, so just need uh, be aware of this kind of um, limitations. Um, uh, it's important to say that the Commission is aware of this uh, issue, is trying to find the solutions for uh, to be implemented um, in the in the in FP9 in the next framework program or even maybe during Horizon 2020 but we don't have clear information about that so if if you are if you have the possibility to have the reimbursement what um, budget should we you, you consider to put in the in the proposal and you should, should then to have the reimbursement uh, in, in in the future so there are different uh, strategies that you can use uh, so you can Based on the on the on the journals that you usually publish or that you think that the consortium partners will publish, you can um, calculate uh, an average of the, the APC. So you can circulate in the within the the, the project consortium uh, a document where they should put the the journals that they usually. Use so you create a list of journals used in the project, then you check for the costs, the APC costs of each um, journal, and then you do an average. And based on that, you uh, um, calculate the, the the right costs to put in the budget. Or you can uh, also um, use an average of the. APC market, let's say. Uh, so, and for that, we have here a, a slide to um, detail you some information. We cannot say that we have uh, one uh, specific number in terms of average, but we have some uh, recent studies uh, that you can use for your for your um, information. So. Um, uh, average uh, for open access journals, we can say that around between uh, 1,100 euros to 1,700 euros. For hybrid journals, uh, a little bit more than, than uh, 2,000 euros. So between 2,200 euros until 2,000 and 500 euros so different studies uh, so you, you have the references here we will share uh, during the so when we have the questions um, we will
will share the slides so and you can check for this information but uh, i think these are relevant numbers for you to to be aware and you can calculate if you want to use this um method uh, which is maybe more easy to do it during the proposal phase uh, as so we have lots of things to do <laughs> when we are writing a proposal and uh, it's not so easy to, to have a clear list of the journals that the, the project consortium will, will use. So it's, um, uh, it's important to say so all these costs are, it's possible to have the reimbursement. Uh, so um, issues that you should consider during the, the, the project uh, about the, this type of costs. Uh, our um, guidance uh, is uh, for you to have a mix approach so uh, to be clear so a mix between depositing articles so between the the green and the gold um, uh, via so depositing articles and repositories publishing wherever you want uh, of course you need to be aware that the journal should allow uh, depending of your area, uh, embargo periods from six to twelve months is maximal, or and then or or also um, pay for some um, APCs uh, in subscription-based journals, uh, and uh, then deposit and comply with the the, the um, and uh, we will have the open access uh, full compliance. So our suggestion is that you use, depending on the size of the project, uh, the, the money that you have available, so this mixed approach that it should uh, allow you to have better um, uh, management of the, this kind of um, dissemination costs. Uh, and the other remark is um, it's that uh, be aware that... Uh, Open access is something that is really good for science, uh, but unfortunately, uh, as in all areas, um, there are some some caution that is needed because there are some um, problems also in this in this uh, field. So, some journals that have um, quality uh, questionable quality. So, be aware of that and. Uh, always uh, publish use open access journals that are um, uh, registered in the directory of open access journals so you can check doag.org to check if the if the if the journal is uh, trustful so and uh, then uh, my last remark in terms of practical information so it's about what are um, projects expected to do in this area of um, compliance with the open access policies in Horizon 2020? And there are relevant uh, um, things to think about during the proposal phase uh, when you are right, you, when you are writing the proposal during the project and after the end of the project. I will highlight one or two topics for each part. Um, uh, for sure, uh, you need uh, during the proposal, so when you are writing the proposal, be aware that all the things related to, with open access are related with the articles um, under dissemination and exploitation. Uh, so you should uh, explicitly um, present a strategy, the way that you will um, uh, open your uh, products, open your results of the projects. Um, and of course, uh, you need to also to to predict costs and uh, to calculate in a clear way the costs in order to have to um, to avoid surprises during the um, the process. And the, our suggestion is to have this mix approach, green and gold. Then during the project, it's, it's quite important to have someone in the um, in the consortium that is responsible um, to manage all the issues uh, regarding the, the open access compliance. Usually there is a partner responsible for dissemination. Uh, maybe this can be the partner also responsible to ensure that all the, uh, all the products, all the results, uh, the published results, the peer review results of the project are available uh, in repositories, uh, comply with this 
uh, requirements of the European Commission. Um, so be well informed about publisher embargoes, the publisher self-archiving policies in order to avoid um, project uh, problems uh, when you are reporting to the European Commission. So it's important to, to say that the European Commission uh, is now um, the last, uh, like in the recent years and for sure in the coming years, having a more uh, restrict uh, policy to, to monitor the compliance. Uh, of course, we had in during the FP7 and during the early years of uh, Horizon 2020 framework program, a more pedagogical approach from the European Commission, but now um, the mandate of the European Commission uh, is being uh, monitoring in a more restricted way, so be aware of that. After the project, so as I told you, so you will have outputs to publish, you will have articles for sure, so uh, pay attention for that fact. Uh, um, be prepared and uh, or prepare a project partner that can take that responsibility also to to take care of the deposit of the articles in repositories after the the end of the of the project okay and um, be aware that uh, there are consequences for the non compliance they are specifically um, described in the in the in the grant agreement that you signed uh, and, and and be aware also that um, the commission in the challenges they they have i'm i put here a, a screenshot from a, a slide a, a presentation from a project officer they have some challenges that they they are facing and one is the the reinforcing of the monitoring and the the sanctions uh, for, for related with this mandate so be aware that um, the commission is more restricted. So in five minutes to, to conclude this webinar, um, I will present now some tools uh, and, 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 and services that are available in, in open air, the open access infrastructure for research in Europe that support the, um, the compliance. So provide you some useful um, tools and also some useful information for you to to make it easy for you, the compliance. So open, open air is an open access infrastructure that is serving the, um, uh, the Horizon 2020 and the open science policies from the European Commission. So we have some useful tools for, for you. The open air have different tools and services targeting different, uh, different stakeholders, different users. Uh, related with open science compliance of Horizon 2020, we have specific services for researchers, project coordinators, research support staff, so research managers that are supporting project coordinators and researchers in the compliance. So uh, I will highlight four or five uh, services um, for you during the, the coming minutes. So services and tools related with open access depositing. Uh, so. It's one of the main uh, requirements. Um, claiming uh, publications and data sets, so uh, linking um, uh, your um, project to specific outputs from your project. Services to support reporting uh, and uh, some additional information and uh, kinds of help desk services to support and to help you in to clarify your your doubts. So the first is about um, uh, the uh, the discovery service uh, that open air is available where you can uh, find for example uh, uh, so all your outputs aggregated so explore.openair.eu it's a service uh, it's a discovery service where you can search for the outputs of your project for your project all the projects have uh, or all the Horizon 2020 projects have a, a, a landing page in, in open air so you can type the name of your project and check for that uh, landing page of your project where you can find all the outputs 
uh, that are deposited in, in different repositories and aggregated from different journals. And you can find for um, all other types of outputs from this open science uh, ecosystem. Not only publications, we are here talking about literature, scientific literature, but uh, we can also talk in this uh, open science ecosystem about research data, software, other kinds of research outputs, all available via the Explore service, where you can also find information about where to deposit. So this is the second service that um, set of services that I, I want to highlight to you. So you need to be aware where can I deposit. Of course, you can have that information in your institution. Your institution have already a repository that usually you use. If you are not aware of that, you can check in open air. If your institution have um, uh, a compliant repository um, to, to be used for this um, for the compliance of the Horizon 2020 mandate. So you just need to, to search for a specific um, repository and um, find that information or a specific uh, thematic repository, not only institution, but also other kinds of repositories. You can search, type here in information and check if you have a repository available for publications and also for data, but I just want to highlight the publications uh, area. If you don't have an appropriate repository, as Antonia said, you can use Zenodo. So Zenodo is a service that um, is a result also of this uh, European infrastructure, the open air. So you have a repository available. Zenodo is a catch-all repository. So it means that uh, you can deposit publications, but you can also use this repository to deposit uh, other kinds of research outputs, research products like um, uh, software, data sets, uh, other kinds of um, outputs from your project, presentations, uh, reports, etc. So you can use this, this service. Uh, I just want to highlight that you can have um, uh, per product, per the um, um, record, you can deposit um, uh, 50 gigabytes, so which is for publication, uh, it's more than enough. For that, uh, it may be uh, have some limitations, but uh, 50 gigabytes is really a lot. So you can have a free upload until 50 gigabytes. You can use it, uh, so you will have a, a personal area where you can check all your uploads. You can also use Lodo to create um, communities for your project, uh, so you, where you can uh, ask your um, partners and uh, the, uh, the other researchers involved in the project to use uh, that specific collection, that specific community to deposit your outputs. Um, and uh, using Zenodo, uh, you will have uh, an easy way to comply with the, the mandate because you will have a, a persistent identifier for your publication, for your record. So a DOI from Zenodo, and you will have also an easy way to identify uh, your article as an output from your project. So as you can see here in this example, um, this, this is an example of a data set, but it can be also an example from a, a, an article. It's linking to three different uh, projects. You can easily, in the, um, uh, in the metadata, uh, identify the project, uh, your project, uh, and link the, this publication uh, to, to your project. So um, we, we did it in terms of uh, facilitate your life. Uh, all the researchers usually um, have lots of systems that they need to, to, to fill and to put information within their uh, institution, uh, regulations, uh, for funders, for national funders, European funders, uh, for um, CV systems. So um, the idea of the process and the workflow of the Horizon 2020 compliance is that you just need to deposit once, you just need to use one repository, one system to deposit your publication and with this uh, you can easily acknowledge your project and you can easily in the um, uh, all the information uh, will be available and collected from in open air and will be available for reporting in the um, uh, participant portal in the EC participant portal in the systems from the European Commission for reporting 
Also, uh, be aware that uh, it's not something that a researcher or project coordination needs to see, but be aware that the open air uh, have APIs that repositories and other uh, systems from the institutions can use to easily put all the list of projects from the European Commission available in uh, the institutional automatic repositories to make it easy to, um, to identify the project uh, as an output from a specific um, article. So, uh, in Zenodo, we have that uh, in other repositories, like the repository of our institution here in Portugal, University of Minho, we also have that. <coughs> and this makes really the life easier to, to the researcher when they are depositing. If you have some uh, limitations, uh, depositing uh, articles and identifying those articles as outputs from specific projects we have a final solution so if you cannot do it in your repository or if you don't have an appropriate repository you can come to open air service portal and claim your publication as an output of your project so we have a link research results tool that make your life really easier uh, and um, Usually this is a tool that um, some research support staff, some project coordinators can use as a, let's say, a last minute solution. <laughs> so, but you can use, is use this uh, service um, during the, the project. So where you can um, search for a public, you can um, identify your project and then search for a, a publication that we should have in our information space. Be aware that open air currently have 25, 26 million records, but we have more than those publications publicly available in our discovery service. Um, we have almost uh, 100,000 million publications in our information space. So um, publications, closed publications. So you can search for that publication. If you, if you search that publication that is an output from your repository, from your project, sorry, you can type the project and link that article to your project. And this information will be available. And this article will be available in your private area and in, in, in open air and uh, um, of course available in the participant portal of the European Commission for reporting. Uh, we have a guide in open air portal available about this if you want to just to check is really a, a, a simple and short guide openair.eu slash claim publication you can check this guide to have more information about this uh, functionality. And uh, um, the last uh, service that I want to highlight is the, the fact, as I already told you, in Open Air we have all the projects have a landing page uh, presenting the, some like minimum information about the project and is where we gather all the information, uh, all the publications, research data from the project, okay? So, and the information that you will have available in this page in Open Air Explorer, it's the information that, um, so the publications that will be available for reporting in the participant portal. Uh, if you don't find those publications here, this means that uh, they are not depositing in compliant repositories or they are not well identified. If they are not well identified, you can use the claim service to have the publications available. In this um, in this landing pages, so to put it clear, so we have this process in place. We gather outputs in open air from different sources, from different content providers, thematic, institutional. We uh, gather in your project landing pages, and we automatically uh, send it to the European Commission participant portal this is an example where you can see the info the um, on the top of this um, uh, table uh, the publication suggested by open air you can accept or reject or you can manually have publications in the in the moment that you are um, uh, reporting so the continuous reporting or the final report of your project 
for this uh, functionality, you also have available um, um, a short guide that you can check if you have any doubt about uh, that. So uh, if you have more questions that just use the, the help desk service of open air or just uh, check our different guides, how to use the node, how to report publications, how to claim publications. We have different uh, 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 guides uh, and useful information for you. Lots of new guides available now in the, in the open air portal, openair.eu slash support. So just check there. If you still have doubts, you can contact the, the help desk um, via the Ask a Question service. So, in terms of uh, information about Open Air, is all you can check about Open Air in openair.eu. So, now I think it's a moment to have uh, questions. So, Tonya can join us and uh, we can start answering the, um, the questions that we, we have here. Mm -hmm. uh Yes, uh, the first question we have here is about uh, platforms like ResearchGate. So does it count as a green open access repository? The answer is no, it doesn't count. Uh, you need to, to put your publications in uh, the institutional repository or another uh, more generalist repository like the archive or, or Zenodo. Uh, these uh, ResearchGate and Academia.eu are really uh, social uh, networks for scientists. They are not really repositories. And they don't support uh, services like, for example, the harvesting that OpenAir does for the, the publications. Uh, they also don't support the long-term preservation, which is important because you, you want your work to be available uh, long-term. And uh, they are business models. So they ask you for your address book, for example, for the, your contacts. They send you emails and, and this kind of thing. So th this is not really compliant and uh, you will not be complying with the open access mandate if you uh, put your publications there, okay? Um, another question. Uh, I just want to, to help, uh, and Daniel. Yes, I'm yes. Share, I'm sharing the screen now. Mm -hmm. So there is uh, an important, um, uh, tool um, that is um, available in the Foster Open Science um, training materials. And so there is a course, as you know, uh, about about the open access to publications, and uh, you have a component of this course that is um, that presents this um, difference between what you can do in a repository and what you can do in Academia Edu and uh, Research Gate. So I think this. Um, Table, for example, is quite clear uh, for for you to to explain this that uh, Antonio was explaining. Um, yes, and this is uh, this course that Pedro was showing you is is part of the is part of the course that you have to link in the LMS uh, in the learning management system uh, with the. Uh, of this course so you can uh, explore it and if you have any question just just tell us okay uh, so uh, another another question uh, if i publish a paper in gold open access paying the apcs am i forced to deposit it also in a repository uh, yes you, you need always to to put the, the publications in a repository either you publish green or gold open access the other question about the um, so the, this is uh, you can think that this is a duplication of effort uh, it's true so if you pay the access is immediate but in fact um, so it's under um, a subscription based service so the commission don't want that the commission want to have the information in the um, in repositories uh, interoperable with uh, systems like open air that then we can provide all the information to systems to open systems and to the european commission systems you know, so it's why we have this uh, clearly stated in the um, in the um, uh, policy of the european commission then the other question about the conferences paper the conference paper so this is the the same so um, we can say that you need to deposit all the, the research outputs. The policy talks about per review 
uh, outputs. So the articles is clear, but it's the same for conference papers. If it's uh, a, a, a conference that have a per review process, so to submit proposals that are uh, per reviewed, so the outputs from this conference, the results of this conference associated to project, need to also to be deposited in repositories. So what about milestones and deliverables? Do we have to self-archive or they just can be available on project websites? So for milestones, milestones and deliverables are not under, we can say that are not the target of this policy, but of course it's a good practice if you deposit it in, in, in repositories. Um, it's important to say that the project website is it's always a project website with the limitations of a project website. Uh, lots of project websites will die after a few months after the, the project ends. Um, lots of project websites are not more than links to PDFs, so they are not, they don't have metadata information, they are not interoperable. So putting your outputs in uh, repositories is a very good practice uh, for two um, uh, main reason. So it's a good practice for preservation and it's a good practice for more visibility and interoperability. So if you think that some milestones and deliverables are relevant reports uh, from your project and that uh, you should provide more visibility, depositing in your repositories is a very good practice. If you don't have an appropriate repository, let's just use Zenodo. If you check in Zenodo, there are thousands of uh, deliverables from, from projects. What about book chapters? Book chapters is the, the same of articles, is the same policy. Uh, so um, there are some more limitations and some embargoed periods that are longer for book chapters, but it's the same. So if you have a book chapter that is um, um, that was published in a book as a per review output, so under a preview view process, uh, you need to, to consider that as an output from the project and deposit in a repository. If you need to provide any embargo period, you can, you can provide. So Katarina is asking about must the archive with preprint PDF version contain some predefined preamble like ISSN publisher link. Um, so um, it's a good practice if we provide that information in the metadata. When you deposit preprints, it's uh, also important. But uh, so uh, it's important to highlight here that. Uh, for the, under the requirements of the Horizon 2020 open access policy, preprints are not considered, okay? Only the, the post print, the, the manuscript of the author with the, the peer review uh, process or the final version are versions considered to comply with the EC requirements, okay? Please be aware of, of that. You can deposit a preprint, but then when the version, the when that paper is accepted, uh, you can update uh, or deposit another version or update. <coughs> sorry, or update that um, that record if the repository allows you to to have this kind of version functionality. So for for um, printed journals, so you need to 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 do to um, to provide a digital life to the article. Let's say so. What can I do if it is not a, an online journal? So I do not have a PDF as author, but online only a printed version. This happens in some areas, I know, uh, but uh, you need to to create a digital life for that uh, for that that article. So digitalized the the article and um, put it available in um, in a um, repository or use the version that you have submitted to the um, to the journal 
Okay. Um, we have one hour for this webinar. Um, so it's, uh, so please put your questions so we have more time. We have more three, four, five minutes. So Vera is asking if not considered on a project itself, any other sources for of funding for OA? We have applied in the past to FP7 post grant pass. Any more options to come? So we don't have, uh, so this is an important question. So in, in Horizon, so in the, um, in 2014 and 15, Open Air ran a, a pilot to support uh, the European Commission to, um, to do a study on uh, how to uh, cover costs uh, of um, articles after the end of the project. So we did this, the FP7 post-grant publishing funds pilot was the name of that project. So we, so we took all the, um, we did the, stu the study, uh, were distributed almost, uh, so a little bit more than 2 million euros for um, hundreds of projects and thousands of articles. Uh, all the conclusions of that uh, pilot uh, were delivered to the European Commission. The Commission is analyzing and trying to find a solution. So the only information I have from some uh, project officers uh, that work in the European Commission in this area of open science is that they are working on a solution for, for sure to have it in the European, in the um, Horizon Europe, in the, in the next framework, um, FP9, uh, but I'm not sure if we will have uh, a solution. Um, so for sure, if we have, uh, we will advertise a lot in all the, the open air and the foster channels, communication channels. So Vera, please stay tuned and follow our channels. So subscribe our newsletter or follow on the Twitter. So for sure we will provide that information, but um, we do not have information about that. If you have more questions, just to conclude, let me share here one slide that I, that I think may be important just for the future. If you have any question, and just before we conclude uh, this um, have it here okay we have one more question here is publishing our article in hybrid journal compliant yeah uh, so yes so so open access journals um, subscription based journals so we we call it hybrid here but it's the normal journals of some of the publishers Elsphere for example so they have some journals that you can only access via subscription based service uh, and you can pay um, to have that article fully uh, in open access so this is what we call hybrid so yes so um, we we present this um, this uh, short graphic here um, where we summarize where is it here okay so here you can you can find the the information and so you can comply based on open access journals or a subscription based journal what you need to do is self-archive 
So and the, and the, and the good practice should be even if you are in a period that uh, your journal don't allow to have that uh, article available in open access and you are you are under an embargo period please deposit your article describe your article so put all the metadata information and then put your article in the closed or embargoed version and then later uh, you can open that article or you can already provide that information in the, 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 the deposit. When you deposit, you can state that this will be available in six or one year. But after, so you have the article accepted for publication, you should be able to deposit, even if it's closed, at least the world and the commission knows that you have a, <coughs> an article and you have the metadata information about the article. Um, okay, so we don't have uh, so be aware that the Commission uh, for the um, Eurasian Europe framework will have uh, will continue this policy in terms of open access to publications will be completely the same public uh, policy uh, with 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 uh, more with the um, clear ways to monitor and with clear sanctions we can say that we are in a more pedagogical period but i we are hearing more cases of um, project coordinators that have their um, for example reports frozen until they explain why all the publications are in closed access or why they do not um comply with the the requirements of the european commission so uh, lots of national open access desks in from open air in europe um, are aware of new cases even in portugal we are aware of new situations that uh, beneficiaries from european research council grants or from uh, rising 2020 projects that are that have more uh, comments from the project officers about their practices in terms of compliance of the open science policies. So be aware of that, please. And uh, so for the, the, the data in the Horizon Europe, the, the open science fair uh, data will also have, be, have a strong mandate in the future. But we are not now talking only about publications. So, Suzanne, um, if we deposit in an institutional repository like University of Porto, it will be automatically available through Open Air? Yes. So, the, um, Susanna, the, the publication will be available. Maybe um, from Oporto, the metadata will not be perfect in terms of. Um, identification of the project, but for sure this will be available. In fact, the University of Porto is the, the largest repository from Portugal represented in, in, um, in open air. So I'm not sure about the, the, the numbers right now, but um, is the, the largest, largest repository uh, from Portugal in, in, in open air. So we have thousands of, of articles and uh, if you have any uh, problem, uh, if uh, we aggregate the content but it's not well identified as a project output, maybe we have, sometimes we have this kind of limitations. You can send an email to open air or you can use also the claim service and you can say, okay, the publication is already in open air but it's not... Uh, uh, identify it as an output for my project, you can claim. You just search the publication, it's quite easy to do that. So, and you link that publication to, to the project. So, Antonia, should we finish? Yes, uh, if there are no more questions, um, I think we reached our 
our limit <laughs> of time and we need to to close this discussion anyway uh, if you have any questions any further questions you can always put them in the forum in the course uh, we have a space where you can uh, put all of the questions that you may have and we'll answer you uh, through the learning management system okay thank you very much for your attention and uh, contact us if you need anything else okay thank you okay.